Sharia in today's episode I'm really excited because today we are hosting youths and you know how it goes right so youth in conservation something new here to talk about silver oak I won't even dive into it because I'm not expert in this so Julius thank you so much for making time for this show today I appreciate uh, the time but a brief introduction of who you are uh, my name is uh, Julius Monari I'm a final year environmental science student at uh, Machakos University, and uh, yeah, I'm a conservationist. Okay, it's so hard to find youths, especially youths in conservation. So what made you dive into this sector? Uh, I wouldn't say that I had uh, an initial passion that I was going to pursue this. But uh, when I came to campus, of course, when I got uh, the letter that I was supposed to do environmental science program, I was so excited because first, uh, where I come from, I would be the first person who was going to pursue that. But then there are some of the things, after getting the letter, I said, okay, this is interesting, environmental science. Uh, then I started doing research to see what is expected of me once I get to campus. Then I realized it's some of the things that are surrounding me. Yeah, I said that could be nice. Then when I got to campus, uh, I was motivated. I got uh, one of the professors, a friend, and he has been mentoring me all through. He's called uh, Dr. Samuel Kimbuku. Is Samuel the, Kimoko. Yes. Okay. He's the one uh, who told me that I can be able to do it. Then I picked up the, the passion from the first class uh, up to now. Oh, okay. Interesting, because Samuel Kimbuko also taught me in one of the units. So I'm really excited. But let's talk about Silver Oak, the origin of it. How did you guys start? What, uh, what do you guys do at Silver Oak? Uh, Silver Oak in full is Silver Oak Mazingira Hub. And uh, it's a youth-oriented uh, group that started a couple of months ago. Uh, we started in April, but came into full force yeah, on July. But we've done quite a number of things before the July. So Silver Oak, uh, our intention, main intention, is to read the front in environmental conservation. Yeah, so we are uh, 25 youths, mainly from uh, universities around Nairobi, but we have uh, some other members from Maseno. We have Maseno, one student from Maseno, Chuka, and uh, me from Machakos, but the rest are based here in Nairobi. All right, what is it that you do? Is it creating awareness when it comes to environmental matters? Or what exactly does Silver Oak Mazingira have to do? Uh, Silver Oak uh, aims to bring a model that can be emulated elsewhere in the world in conservation. A circular model that has five pillars, which are as well our objectives. That is to touch on uh, conservation. That's through establishment of a tree nursery, specifically for indigenous tree seedlings, because we all understand the role indigenous trees play in our environment. Then, uh, energy, green energy, because where we are heading to is the world that will be using renewable energy. Then another pillar is on waste management that is uh, subdivided into water recycling as well as solid waste management. So that is under innovation now. Right. We are also having innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, another pillar is on uh, green uh, jobs, all economic development through green jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these and the social inclusion as well through research and engaging people in the community because we don't want to focus on the science part 
but uh, because we are not all, of, all not all of the members are scientists, we have people from business and all that. Uh, we want to focus on science as well as uh, indigenous knowledge, because we believe the two combined indigenous knowledge and science will give it the best shot that the world needs. Where we are coming from, initially we were indigenous people before we, get, we got into civilization. But we've also realized that science is good. So we want to combine them. Because I'm staying in Nairobi, but there is also another person who is staying, staying away from Nairobi in an indigenous community in Mount Elgon. And, uh, he is not much into science, but he can be able to tell us about indigenous knowledge. And we also as scientists, can we be able to mix this? We tell, oh, the perspective you are giving it from science is not good. Can you take this perspective in uh, indigenous knowledge? We also advise those in indigenous knowledge, can you take this perspective in science? Yeah, because uh, you, the perspective you are currently taking in indigenous knowledge is not okay. Yeah, so that we can create a sustainable model. But a quick one, we know you've mentioned about 25 other students, right? Do these 25 other students represent different agendas? Because you've mentioned something, innovation, you've talked about waste management. So does the, uh, does the 25 students you have have different things that they do or different things that they bring to the table? Yes. Uh, we, we have so many disciplines coming together. Yeah. Initially, most of the people Oh, all over, people are not taking the environment as serious as it is. Not realizing that it is a resource that can be able to be uh, harnessed and uh, affect the others, the other pillars. Because you're talking about sustainability, there is a social pillar, there is an economic pillar as well as the environment. So many times, people have invested so much in economic development and uh, at uh, some angle trying to adjust on social pillar, but they have completely forgotten the environment. So they are trying to end poverty, which is a social pillar, mm -hmm. but forgetting about the environment. Mm -hmm. For example, climate action is a, a, an environmental, under environmental pillar. The moment we deal with the climate uh, breakdown, we can be able to end poverty as well as we can be able to secure our economic development, our investments done. Yeah, because I believe you've seen around how floods are doing us a mess, droughts are doing us a mess, yeah. and so many other things. And I even had uh, recently there's a, there's a drought alert that um, we, are, we, are, we, we might experience according to uh, the meteorological department. So I think natural disasters are something Kenya does not, has not invested in and people tend to feel like environment is, should not be uh, a priority. So we prioritize other things. And this is where you guys are coming from, right? Ah, okay. So when it comes to creating awareness, what are you guys doing? Because when I met Brian, he just mentioned it randomly. So what are you guys doing to create awareness or even to publicize what you're doing? Uh, we, we are taking that for on the social media okay. as well as also talking to other people like to support our hub because we really need we, we have a great vision I've not talked about the vision of the hub and the mission the kind of uh, things that we want to do there but uh, maybe I can just go back a little bit no, it's fine. Okay. Silver Oak it's a, a, an indigenous tree and it's endemic uh, to the central highlands of Kenya. Yeah. And the tree is actually termed as nearly endangered or threatened because the numbers are going down because of the value of that tree. Yeah. So many people are cutting it down. And so where we are based in Karen, the tree used to exist there in good numbers. And now there is none. So we are coming as silver oak because that's the tree uh, that we want to uh, increase the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are giving silver oak uh, a priority among other indigenous trees so that they can get uh, in good numbers 
then we can get ourselves into ecosystem restoration. Exactly. That was my second question. What you guys are doing in ecosystem restoration? Oh, okay. I think I've spilled over. But uh, so that we can increase the number of silver oak as well as other indigenous tree seedlings for purposes of ecosystem restoration. Okay. But don't you think, okay, because oak and uh, I know oak and mahogany are usually trees that, uh, you know, they are very high priced trees, they are hardwoods. So do you feel like the minute you, you're trying to push the agenda of the increase of hardwood, the demand will be high, people will be, it will lead to an increase of cutting down of these trees as compared to softwood, something like cypress, something like pine. Don't you feel like the demand of these hardwoods will continue? Definitely the, the demand will continue. But uh, what we are doing mm -hmm. is, uh, if you're going to buy the trees from us, mm -hmm. the, the seedlings, mm -hmm. or if you're going to plant the seedlings somewhere, we really need to tell you, if you're having a plan, okay, they take so many years mm -hmm. to mature. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time a person thinks of cutting this, uh, the silver oak, it would have already done the restoration. But then we tell these people that these trees are very precious to us. And uh, the same way you are attaching a value to them, those people that are coming in the future, they will as well need them. Yeah. So the sustainability. Oh, all right. Okay, so we've talked on creating awareness, uh, the ecosystem restoration. But just to mention about youth in conservation, why do we have, what do you think do we have um, a number of youths who choose to be silent on matters of environment? People choose politics over environment. But you've talked about these 25 students, you know, that you have. Do you plan to increase? Um, do you see a point where the number of youths in conservation or the voices in youths? might you know you might increase the number because we've mentioned about elizabeth Watuti, person who i schooled with you know so but that's just that's a one okay that's one of the many youths you know so are you planning to increase the number or yeah we we are planning to not really increase the number but we are planning to work on ourselves okay we might not need as many people in the hub but we need as many people to get the information. So those of us who are in the hub, we make sure that our behavior, our ecological living, are we, are we eco-friendly, are we embracing eco-friendly living? Yeah. How, how many people are seeing what we are doing, mm -hmm. even at our homes, mm -hmm. so that they can also change their behavior mm -hmm. as regards to the environment. Yeah. So that one is, uh, important but if we feel that we need to get as many people yes we are open to as many people and also as uh, the wider diversity the better because the moment you get a lawyer then we can we know that we can be able to discuss um, matters of environmental policy and law very well and so he represent our interest in policy making oh, okay talking of policy making oh sorry talking of policy making I know Every the one okay something that is in every environmental uh, environmentalist any leader right now is COP26, and we've, from the talk, the little bit of chat we've had, I know you have your different um, you have a view on COP26. Let's let's talk about COP26. Uh, COP26 is very important as far as global uh, environmental policy frameworks are concerned, because just. Uh, it's not even a month. We received uh, the sixth uh, edition of uh, IPCC report. Yeah. And uh, most of us in conservation have embraced the report. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are now talking about how people can get the information. Yeah. Because, for example, IPCC is talking about the coast of East Africa, or see, uh, South East African uh, coast, mm -hmm. that's Kenya and uh, some part of uh, Tanzania, they're going to receive four cyclones in the near future. Yeah. That is featured in the IPCC report. But how many people in the coast know that they're actually going to experience the cyclones? None. So that's where we come in. And uh, as the COP is very important, my focus should be getting the information that is, is at the COP, the COP, that is going to be discussed at the COP, 
to reach everyone. Probably my grandmother, my father. If I don't tell my dad about uh, things that are going on, not that he's, he's not informed, but he's as well into so many other things. But he needs to know that you're going to experience floods. So the information that is at the COP also needs to get to the people down here. Yeah. So the dissemination of information to the, you know, the ordinary one and change one. Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. So before we wrap up, I want you to tell us, how do we support Silver Oak? Uh, Silver Oak needs to be featured in the next 10 years of United Nations Ecosystem Restoration. That's a big one. Yeah, the next 10 years, the program is running in the next 10 years. The uh, Paris Agreement is running in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, they are running in the next 10 years. So in the next 10 years, we have three things that we need to achieve. Yeah. And so, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a model that is touching on five main objectives. And the moment we are saying, if you have an investment, actually the model, as uh, we are terming at Silver Oak Mazingira Hub conservation model, mm -hmm. it's taking a perspective of pressure and release. And the pressure is investment. Mm -hmm. The moment you make an investment in social inclusion and research, you will definitely affect some of our other objectives, and that's the RIRIS, which is conservation now and sustainability. You will affect uh, green jobs, green energy, the production of a, a good number of indigenous seedlings. You will affect how we are going to approach the issue of waste management, both solid and water recycling. So pressure and RIRIS. That's the model that we are presenting to the world. If you come on board and give us a pressure, which is in investment, at any of the, uh, of the pillars, you are definitely uh, have sorted whatever that we needed because it will move around, yeah, all the way creating green jobs, even for ourselves, but also for the others. Again, this model, we want it everyone at an individual level to uh, embrace it, as well as the national playmakers, the international playmakers. Uh, looking at uh, like Kenya, we have the national government, we have the, uh, the county governments uh, coming down all the way to the ward. We need this thing to get from the national government, get to the county, again from the county maybe to the constituencies, to the wards, all right? Each ward has its own conservation model, what all has adopted that conservation mo model uh, to a situation where we can be able to get a, a person, for example, in a, where I stay, in Cray City mm -hmm. ward, we have people who are using green energy, we have people who are actually do, taking green jobs, we have people who are managing their waste, mm -hmm. uh, recycling their water, and uh, so many other things. So the moment you can support us, we are going to realize all those uh, three uh, objectives set by the world and also uh, we are going to uh, transform the kind of a situation that we are experiencing right now. All right. Yeah. Julius, do you have your parting shot, the last few the f words you can, uh, especially to youths in conservation? Because I know it's difficult, you know. So do you have your parting shot? Let's get your parting shot. Uh, what I would like to say is, uh, maybe you can allow me to make it a little bit longer. Oh, longer. Yeah, okay. right. because uh, we really need to connect to ourselves okay. among our, our, our suits. And uh, one thing I want to discourage us is supremacy. That's a challenge that uh, I've seen among us, uh, us, the supremacy that I'm a better environmental conservationist than everyone else. Actually, that is the issue. People call it the battle of the weeds. Yeah. And uh, that is what I talked about in the book uh, that was written by a professor in uh, Canada called Gerard Kutney, mm -hmm. called the uh, carbon politics uh, and the failure of Kyoto I'm Protocol. Ready. Yeah. yeah. Gerard talks about how 
the Europe and the USA were trying to fight each other, not uh, to realize the Kyoto Protocol, mm -hmm. but just their own, because, you, you know, they were going to cut down their emissions. The moment the US cuts down their emissions and uh, uh, Europe does not cut, then Europe, of course, develops as fast as the US. Yeah. So they went on the battle. You remember US pulled out of the Kyoto Protocol yeah. under President Bush and uh, the whole thing collapsed now. Yeah. It failed. So that supremacy among us as our suits. Let's connect with each other. Um, I could be better in innovation. I could present something very brilliant in innovation. You can tell us about wildlife management. It's all about this environment. Then uh, the second thing I want to talk about is to continue with the solidarity. It's unfortunate that we don't have that courage, although we are youths, I know many people are doing it, mm. but we really need that courage to speak out as it is. Uh, there is a friend of mine in uh, DR Congo. Mm. When I was talking with him, he told me he ran away from, uh, he's called Remy Sahiga. He's one of the people who are in the forefront in fighting for Congo forest. Mm. You know, whatever is happening in Congo forest, it's a total mess. So he was fighting online and both uh, trying to do some things on the ground to ensure that people rise against that. He told me he started receiving threats and he ran away into Malawi. So that's where he is at, at the moment. But, but you see, sometimes the road less traveled is usually a, a good one. Yeah. As if you ask me, I think youths who take the road less travel tend to explore more as compared to the ones who use the same, you know, who choose to use the same, to go by the same path. So it's good to see youths in conservation most of it. It won't come easy because I've seen Elizabeth and the, and the threats she's received and I can only imagine what you guys go through. So everyone has a voice and you have to speak up, you know. At, at some point I respect everyone who has a voice and someone who at the end of the day is a voice of action. So it's always a pleasure to host such youths and I'm so grateful you guys took time to come on our show and uh, continue doing the good work. Yeah, we'll uh, continue with the work. Yeah. We are set, we have the energy by, I, I have, uh, uh, you know I'm young. Yeah. I, I have quite a number of years mm -hmm. to do this because I believe, actually I believe that I have, I have my own hashtag mm -hmm. that is called Lives Better With Trees mm -hmm. and the climate action is possible. I don't believe anything else apart from that. I believe life is better with trees at any given point and this climate action is possible. Are you guys on social media? All right, so we'll, people should follow you. Uh, what are your, ha, ha, type, your, your Twitter handles, your Facebook, if you have that? Uh, Facebook, it's uh, Silver Oak Mazingira Hub. Uh -huh. uh, the same on Twitter and the same on Instagram. Ah, okay. All right, so thank you so much, Julius. I know you've shared so much, which I'm so grateful. So, and it's good to see youth such as you are a voice of reason. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, um, that was Julius. I hope you've learned something and the importance of using your voice to stand up for something. Up next is Brian, who I'm really excited to talk to because he's touching on everything recycling. So how about we do this again after the break?